Hey everybody, welcome to Cracked Pack Tuesday, number 23 on the Mana Lake. I'm John, as always, and we've got another pack of Magic Origins. Only a few weeks left, and then we're going to be opening uh, Battle for Zendikar instead. Uh, but we're going to crack this open and see what we would take. Pack one, pick one. Hopefully not Leaf Girder. Leaf Girder? Leaf Gilder yet again. But we'll see. First up, we have Thornbow Archer, single black for a 1-2. When it attacks, it, uh, or sorry, your opponent loses one life. Uh, if they don't have an elf. Decent creature, not first pickable, but you pick this up if you're in elves. You pick this up if you really need a one drop. Uh, but you pick it up late in the pack. Not early at all. Cobblebrute, he's up next. Three and a red for a 5-2 creature elemental, and that's it. Uh, he does what he needs to do. He's a four drop. Uh, if you need a four drop, if you need a, a big beater, this is him. Uh, he typically just trades because he does trade with basically everything except for i guess mr thornbow archer here um but yeah he he kills stuff and you know you could always just hold him back as a blocker and basically say your opponent can't attack with something on the ground unless they want it to die um great target for chandra's ignition but uh other than that pretty middling you know he's a he's a mid to late pick not a first pick at all Next up, we've got Enshrouding Mist, a very good combat trick. A single white for an instant. Target creature gets plus one, plus one to on a turn. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to that creature this turn. And hey, if it's Renown, you get to untap it too. Uh, the untapping doesn't happen too much. Uh, you know, you don't save this until you have a renowned creature. Um, but it just helps you uh, win combat, uh, win on the attack, win on the defense, uh, maybe get in that extra point of damage you need uh save a creature from a burn spell and yeah if it's renowned you can attack with your renowned creature your stalwart Aven, and then uh surprise on tap it and have a blocker a uh, really good combat trick i would hate first picking this but it is high pick quality um i hope this pack gets better we'll have to see way to the underworld uh three and a black enchantment aura the enchanted creature gets minus three minus two it's removal. It removes a fair bit in this format. It removes Cobblebrute. It removes Thornbow Archer, both the creatures we've seen so far. Um, if you need to, you can uh, just decrease the power of something bigger. You could make Cothoped into a 3-4 a uh, if you really needed to. Uh, just, you know, s save yourself a few turns or something like that. Not the ideal, but uh, it can be done. It, it does creep into first pickable territory in weak packs because it is removal it's early removal it's not late game removal generally but uh it, it can get first pick if uh if it's a weak pack next up we've got nivix barrier three and a blue for an illusion wall it's an o4 it's got flash and when it comes down target attacking creature be careful i've seen a couple of people try to do this uh when they're attacking uh target attacking creature gets minus four minus oh so you generally get to blank an attacker uh and then block and probably blank another attacker um really good if you're on the uh the late game plan i use this a lot in my league sealed deck uh as well as in my team sealed deck when i went to the mana deprived super series league uh or sorry not league uh uh, team sealed event uh, just because I needed to get to late game I needed to get will breaker and sentinel out and this comboed well with will breaker as well um, yeah not a great card not a high pick but if you're going the blue black blue white blue something where you want to get to the late game then this is a fine pickup to uh, help you get there next up we've got timber pack wolf one and a green for a two two and it gets plus one plus one for each other timber pack wolf you have so if you have two there are three threes if you have three there are four fours if you have uh, four, there are five fives. Uh, fine card, uh, primarily because it's a two, two for two. Um, you would never first pick a two, two for two with slight upside. Uh, maybe high upside, but not slight upside, which this is. Um, I've yet to see somebody really go off with these, uh, any time that they've been in a format. They were in M13, M14, I can't remember quite exactly. Um, but I've never seen anybody really, uh, collect them all. Um, but they're fine two twos for two. If you're in green, if you see this, you know, when you're solidly in green, you can take it highly. If you're, uh, flirting with the idea of green, you can take this, you know, mid pick for mid pack for sure, but not first pick. Wild instincts, uh, three and a green, the green removal spell target creature you control gets plus two plus two until end of turn and it fights target creature you don't control. Uh, yeah, it's green it's removal spell. Green doesn't get removal except in the form of fight, and this is a really good fight card. Plus two, plus two is really good. Uh, the only way this could be better is if it was cheaper or if it was instant speed. Um, but 
it's a solid green card. If you're in green, you want these. You want at least a couple of these. Um, you know, you need to have enough creatures to make sure they can go off, but I'm totally fine playing two of these. The only thing that would stop me from playing three is the fact that it's four mana, but it's a really good card. If you're green, you want this, but I wouldn't first pick it and go into green. I don't think. Next up, we've got Guardian Automaton. This is a 3-3 artifact creature for four, and when it dies, you get three life. If you really need a four drop, if you're really hurting for creatures, you can play it. Otherwise, I wouldn't touch it. It's, you know, slightly overcosted. Uh, 3 3 for 3 is better. 3-3s um, three for 4s have been okay in the past, but, you know, there's just there's better stuff going on. So if you need it, you need it, but not first pickable. Next up, we've got Claustrophobia. One blue-blue enchant creature. You tap that creature. And it never untaps again as long as Claustrophobia is there. Sorry, it doesn't untap during the uh, controller's untap step. So you do want to be careful. Uh, I haven't done this yet in this format, but I did in Innistrad or M14, whenever this was uh, in a limited format. Uh, uh, somebody put it on a Vigilance creature, which, you know, that's great. It turns off the Vigilance creature. But if they have a way to untap it, that Vigilance creature is never going to tap again and Claustrophobia becomes useless. Very, very narrow case, but... You know, just be careful of that. Um, but yeah, Claustrophobia is a great pick. It's solid blue removal, more or less. Uh, you know, I don't know, let's say 80, 90% of the time, it's going to be just removal. Doesn't stop activated abilities, doesn't stop triggered abilities, so keep that in mind, but great card. On to the uncommons. We've got Murder Investigation. One in a white, enchant creature you control. Very important, you control. Uh, when that creature dies, you get 1-1 one, one soldiers, uh, where X is equal to that creature's power. Uh, bad card. Totally bad card, because it doesn't do anything by itself at all. You need everything to go right for this card to do anything. You need to have a big creature on the board. You need to have this in hand. You need to cast this on that creature. They need to not kill it in response. Then that creature needs to die. I don't, I don't want to plan on my big creature dying. I want to plan on just winning the game with the big creature. Um, so I'd rather just have any other creature. And, you know, late game getting, I don't know, five one ones, Probably not going to do much. Uh, Murder Investigation is one of those cards where everybody... Uh, not everybody, uh, newer players, look at it and they just think about this army of 1-1s one -ones on the field. Uh, they don't think about how hard that's going to be to get and how ineffectual it's going to be when it does go off. Uh, yeah, avoid this card. Don't ever play this card. Next up, we've got Conclave Naturalists. Four and a green for a 4-4. Four -four. When they enter the battlefield, you naturalize. You get to destroy an artifact or an enchantment. Uh, totally fine card. 4-4 four -four for 5 is fine. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't happily play this. You know, I, I'd prefer something else. But, you know, we don't live in a perfect world. So generally, I'm pretty fine playing this in every green deck I play. Uh, just as a 4-4 four, for four, 5. I, I don't even care if it has a target. And I often, at least in game 1, would not save it to wait for a target. In game 2, if I knew they had suppression bonds or something else, I, I might save it for a little bit. But uh, otherwise, I'm happy to just have a 4-4 for four, four, 5. Uh, it's a fine card. I'd never first pick it. But uh, if I was even slightly in green, uh, and, you know, there wasn't a Leaf Gilder or Wild Instincts in the pack or something like that, I, I would take this for sure. It's a totally fine card. Whoops, we jumped ahead to our rare. I spoiled the miserable surprise. Um, turn to Frog, 1 and a blue for an instant. Until end of turn, uh, target creature be loses all abilities and becomes a, fro a blue frog with base power toughness 1-1. One, one. Generally removal, but can still screw you over if your opponent has combat tricks or, or anything else. Um, or if your opponent has you know already given a, a continuous effect to the creature, turn to Frog won't turn that off. Um, yeah, it's fine, but it's not nearly as solid as something like claustrophobia for removal if you're in blue if you're slightly light on removal or there's not much else going on in the pack this is a great pick but it's not a first pick and there's that miserable miserable rare super miserable rare helm of the gods single colorless mana for an equipment equipped creature gets plus one plus one awesome for each awesome enchantment you control terrible terrible uh you know this pack is pretty big on enchantments we've got way to the underworld and we've got uh claustrophobia but way to the underworld ideally goes away ideally goes away um claustrophobia i guess is there and you get an enchantment and maybe you load up on auras but you know 
you need creatures in your deck. Uh, yeah, this requires way too much work to go off in limited. Uh, in constructed, yeah, you could give it a shot, but I still wouldn't recommend it. There's just so much better stuff you could do with enchantments. Um, you know, absent constellation and whatnot. But yeah, don't try this card because uh, by itself, it literally does nothing. It equips to a creature and gives them plus zero plus zero for the low low cost of one mana. Um, yeah, don't. Don't try it. Don't even try it. Uh, it's not worth it. Not in this format. Uh, in Theros, this would have been super cool and probably overpowered with, you know, a quip cost of one. But, uh, yeah, don't touch this. And I saw we had a foil, and the foil is Kithian's Irregulars. That's going to change things a little bit. Kithian's Irregulars, two white-white for a uh, creature human soldier. It's a 4-3. It's got Renown 1. And the coolest part, pay white-white, tap target creature. You don't even have to tap Kithian's Irregulars, which means that if you have four uh, planes up, you can tap two things. If you have six planes up, you can tap three things. Uh, yeah, you can tap as much as you have white mana, white mana available. That is a super powerful effect. Uh, you know, tappers are generally pretty solid. Um, you know, a Crow and Jailer, he's a little bit weak, partly due to being a 1-1 one, one, and partly due to it being three mana to tap. But uh, two mana is okay. But the fact that it's super repeatable because you never have to tap this guy is awesome. Um, yeah, and even if he is tapped, even if you attacked with him, you can still use it because you don't have to tap the ability. Such a good creature. Uh, and the fact that if you can get in with him and he becomes a 5-4, then uh, yeah, these guys are just going to beat down like crazy. Yeah, Kithian's regulars. Super happy with them. And then we've got a goblin and a swamp. So this pack, I don't think there's much of a question uh let's take kithian's irregulars out i was actually kind of looking at claustrophobia wild instincts way to the underworld and in shrouding mist um four non-creatures uh if this was the case i would probably be looking at weight or claustrophobia and i think i'd probably just take claustrophobia for being a little bit more you know across the board removal it's going to re remove basically anything that I can target it with. Uh, whereas Way to the Underworld is just going to be an early removal spell or a, a debuff late in the game. But that's all a moot point because we're going to take the Kithians Irregulars. It's just such a solid card. Um, you know, it puts us into white and <laughs> as uh, experience has shown, 50% of the pod or more are going to be playing white. But uh, uh, we may as well start early and we may as well start with uh, possibly one of the best white cards that would be in our pod. So Kithian's Regulars, my pick for sure. Let me know what you would have taken. Would you have taken the Kithian's Regulars? Would you have avoided fighting for white and taken the weight or the claustrophobia? Or would you have been the brave person to try the uh, the Helm of the Gods deck? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Manalik. That's L-E-E-K. Like the vegetable, not the card. You can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash themanaleek. You've already found me here on YouTube. You've got the comment section down below. As I said, let me know what you would take. And I love seeing you guys interact with me and interact with each other down there. As well, if you like the videos, you should click those little thumbs up icons. That lets me know that you like the videos, the world know that you like the videos, and keeps my videos rising up through the ranks. Finally, if you haven't subscribed yet, you should. There's a button below each video and one in the outro of each video. That'll keep you up to date on all the latest crack a pack Tuesdays, Wacky Wednesdays, Spiky Saturdays, and any other videos that pop up here and or there. Finally, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time.